it's hard to describe because it's different than it doesn't it, it kind of makes sense and and people watching it it feels real but there's something odd and strange about it and i think that was the tone i was always interested was you know make something that's that's very grounded but then slowly lifts more and more out of realism as the film progresses but still try to root it into something that is emotionally true you know this is one of those films where it's um <sighs> It's very um, cerebral and very esoteric, and so it's, it's hard to really describe the characters. You start in a world that is basically seems normal, but you can't quite, quite figure out the rules of this world. There's something a little odd about it. As the film progresses, every time you start to think you figure out what the rules you're operating within, something else happens that makes you question, wait, what are the rules? My feeling about the film is that it's a, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a cautionary tale, but at the same time, kind of a reflection of something that's already been done. I just think of the movie as a mystery. There are details that keep unraveling and uncovering themselves. The trick was to push it as far as you could push it without shutting people down. Part of the uh, requirement or, or ask uh, when I cast Javier Bardem and Jennifer Lawrence was that, look, I want to take you guys for three, four months and seclude ourselves in a warehouse out in Brooklyn and basically workshop the script and develop it and think about it. And for about four months, we were alone at a table and we just sat around and started to develop it more and more. This is exactly right. His character is... A narcissistic there's nothing, artist. No, and yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong here. You're not showing any disrespect to her at all mm -hmm. by inviting people over. He would. These people just lost a fucking kid. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, of course, of course I'm going to invite them over there. They have nowhere to go. I mean, it's what the entire film is. What's more important, being in love with the partner, with your partner, and, and focusing on them, or being a great host. Eventually, climaxing in the last two weeks of that process, we brought Michelle Pfeiffer in and Ed Harris and. Donal and Brian Gleason. We actually shot the film. The set was taped out. We did every single shot, every single scene, just basically getting a sense of the camera movements and the sort of progression of the characters and their arc before we ever started to shoot. The prep on this movie was, was intense. I mean, we had three months of rehearsals with our full cast. I mean, that's normally often how long it takes to actually shoot a movie. I mean, this, tight, she turns, and then the reaction is that. So it goes tight right over her, and then boom, tight, tight here. All please. Camera rolls. Have a five, take two. And action. I started forming my relationship with the house in a warehouse <laughs> where there was just chalk drawings of the outline of the house. So my imagination was already starting with how she would walk down the stairs and hold the banister and really feel the home or how she would feel the intensity at which her, her close emotions are tied to the house. So then once we got to Montreal and we were on that set, that just happened really effortlessly. The entire movie was shot on various uh, versions of the house. One was on a location, one was on a stage. The octagonal house was oddly tied into phrenology and was developed by architects and scientists as um, sort of like a harmonious shape for a house based on the function of the human brain. That was just weird enough for us to kind of hang a whole like a set onto like okay we're gonna we're gonna do that we're gonna develop that so we have the octagon we have this sort of labyrinthine structure and the idea was that there are no dead ends in our house there are a series of hallways and rooms that you enter into but no room is really a dead end because we want to always kind of be moving forward we actually built multiple sets um, 
We built the first floor of the house outside in a field where we shot all of our daylight shots that you could see out a window. So we had, you know, a real grass field out there that was very surreal, but it was, you know, in a real field. You know, you can, if you're one end of the house, you can kind of see all the way through, you know. There's kind of an atrium in the middle of it. And so it was very particular, you know, the blocking and everything. And, and because of the way it was shot, you know, things were very specific in terms of where we were and, you know, where you needed to be for whatever shot it was. For the bulk of the film, there were three kinds of shots. A shot over her shoulder, where she's always in, referenced in the frame, where we can see the things in front of her and have a geographic relationship between her and whoever she's interacting with in the space. Or a close-up from the neck up, because you're not always conscious of your body when you're walking around, or her point of view. And that was the entirety of the language of the film. Oh, you see what you did, huh? Do we, do we, need, a, do we need a beat up to see no, you? No, no, right no, 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 I think you look at what, look yeah, at what yeah. I gotta see it. Right? <laughs> say, say, see, see, I think that's what you have time for. Uh, or you can say, see what you did, and as you say, they think, oh, see what you did? See what you did. to the bathroom, and it's gonna whip into the door, and then we'll count to like two or three, and then we're gonna come back. built a house that was, for all intents and purposes, the only difference between it and a location is that we could screw into the walls. Nothing moved. Having to go through real doorways, having to go up and down real stairs, it lends itself to a reality that I think the film um, succeeds on. The entire film is basically either shot over her shoulder or on her face or what she's looking at which is an incredibly limited amount of um, shots to take back to the edit room. So if Jan at any moment wasn't working, there wasn't many places to go. So she had to be endlessly specific and endlessly good. all the floors of the house indoors on a stage where we shot all the night shots and where you didn't see out a window and really the second half of the film was all shot on that stage for a movie that all takes place in one house it was quite the construction job you could see the circle that the camera would go in around the house so it was very very planned out that's a big shot No 
So it turns, the shutter exposed the film, which is right there. Oh, that's cool. And it's then and it turns 24 frames per second. So when you roll the camera, this is what it does. Shooting 16 millimeter was a foregone conclusion because it has become part of the uh, aesthetic that Darren's been known for. Part of that is practical, part of that is completely uh, subjective sort of love for the texture that it brings. Today we're, we're sort of riddled with, I would say, the same image over and over again. It's like a digital image and people have lost the, the feeling uh, that they had when they were watching a movie because they don't have that texture anymore. They don't have that little patina that stands in between reality and cinema. And then uh, I think Darren's always strived to have it. Smaller camera, longer loads, texture. So it's a combination of practicality and uh, aesthetics. As the film progresses, it goes more and more into the darkness, into the night, and we were able to sort of shoot that whole journey in one long, long, challenging swoop. So he sent me 75 pages and I read it. And uh, part of it was part script, part essay, part novel. It wasn't fully formed, but you could see the idea. I immediately thought, is he okay? And I called him after I read it, are you okay? He's like, why? And I go, because this feels like a nightmare. I think there really was a fever dream aspect to it, because when you write that quickly, you're channeling something. The, the way it builds and that freneticism and that fact that it's so odd, but yet it coheres, I think that cohering comes from the fact that it all came from one place, even though there's so many different ideas in it. There would be a master shot that was so long that a lot was happening that would change from take to take. What are you doing? I'm going in the... That's good. Let me see it. Hey, action, guys. Action. Yeah. Right it was very good emotions. Then right here, Steve, if you could say, give us space, right when you go there, to the crowd. And you're sort of going back and forth. Oh, when I'm fighting with Jerry? Yeah, just sort of, you can go this way, forward and back, but if you go left and right, you'll never find it. All right, let's go. Let's go. Okay, guys, we're going to rehearse with... Uh, They got us, you know what I mean? There's a certain atmosphere of, of tension, I think, that, that kind of remains throughout the entire film until the tension just is no longer tension. It's just all hell busting loose, you know? And then we finally get to the fever dream where things ramp up and we cr have created these sort of vignettes of humanity within the house. We had talked about everything from uh, like Ebola victims to full on protests with riot police uh, to war zones to ash covered like Hiroshima bodies and plague victims, uh, shanties have been built in and we really staged these things within the house. At some point the house kind of is a stand in for the scale of human history um, in a, a slice. Not all of it good. <laughs> I mean, a, another big kind of genre that we were playing with in this film was the home invasion picture. I, I don't know, it's very relatable, I think, and, and very scary when you start to sort of see your world split apart and taken away from you and there's nothing you can do. 
I also want this piece of door right here. This this motherfucker's coming home with me tonight. And what's, hey, what's your role in this? My role? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Herbert. <laughs> What if the world is like a house and we invade that house and we destroy the house and in the name of in the name of love, in the name of love for somebody? It asks you to make a journey, emotional journey. I think for me it was a very deep reading on humanity, on the world itself. So I, I think those themes of like how human emotion works and how we respond to things that we love in positive and negative ways. It's all jammed into the, these situations and characters. So I don't think it's gratuitous in that way, but I think it's deeply disturbing that that's part of the essence of what the film is. And then you're here, and then on both sides, the most of it's gonna be on camera right side, and then when the Molotov cocktail goes, that's kind of right side. And as that happens, when the Molotov cocktail goes off, is a bunch of the police are rushing that way, and creating a whole new so And that goes with that, the Molotov cocktail hits, that's when you get your next attack. And on that, you might see where Even though we're shooting things that are eerie and scary and there's a light bulb exploding and my character is scared, to me, the allegory is so much bigger than what we're looking at, that it's, it's so much bigger than a jump scare or something looking frightening. It's, it's what it all means. Um, that's what I saw. 
when I finally saw the movie for the first time. And again, be, uh, be careful with the uh, robot, okay? Here we go. You're all gonna want one for Christmas. Action! This isn't a thing that you should feel comfortable with in the movie, and I think we make a point with the violence of it being uncomfortable, and being violent, and, and being as horrible as it is in real life, as opposed to like a movie convention that you're comfortable with. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> 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 
You never loved me! You just loved how much I loved you. I gave you everything. You gave it all away. Action! She says what? She says go ahead take it, right? Go ahead take it. So we want to keep body. You. And then you stick the hands in, your head comes up, or yeah, exactly in pain. So you just do it, and then that's and then just hold it there, don't get it all over you, and then we'll come clean you up. Okay. Okay? Alright. Go ahead. Stay seated. You don't need to get up. And then spin out. The camera will follow you. You'll hold it. You'll start to squeeze it. Then we'll do a Texas switch where we'll pull it out and stick the other crystal in your hand. And squeeze. Find the crystal. Find it. Dust it. At the end, you know, if you do your job really well and people are entertained, then it's going to take a while to process what you just experienced because there's so much more beyond the entertainment value. And I think I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. Just having it out in the world and knowing it's going to be released and knowing that some people will see it, I, you know, the joy for me is going to hear their reaction. I'm not sure what the experience is going to be for people. I'm really curious to see. I'm excited to share with people and see their reaction because um, it's very unexpected and different than what you normally get at the theater. So, I mean, I think the film just goes further than you think it can possibly go quite a number of times. Even when you get to the very end, you're like, okay, that was insane. Then it goes, oh, yeah? I think it's exciting. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to make something lukewarm. It's another thing to make something scalding hot. It's a Roman candle. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's an explosion. It's a riot of a movie. I'm excited to see just the span of reactions. Again, it's a movie to experience, not to be explained, I think. It's not a passive experience watching these movies. People don't shake the movie so easily. I mean, you know, sometimes that pushes pretty hard, but that's how you connect. The worst thing I think you can do is make a movie where, you know, you're entertained, but then, you know, a couple of hours you're like, oh, what did we see tonight? And you don't really remember it. I think it's more you wanna, you wanna give people something to think about, and it'll be a lot of heated conversation, but that's kind of the fun. It's been a really long journey, an amazing journey. I'm incredibly thankful for all the passion that everyone showed to this movie. Thank you very much.